Today we are going to talk about GraphQL endpoint analysis and for demonstration purpose we are going to use DVGA which is Dam Vulnerable GraphQL application. So before we jump into that, let's have a little introduction about GraphQL and how it works. So what is GraphQL? GraphQL is a query language used by APIs to query data and update data in an application. Just normal usage what API does. So it is just like REST, but the difference is that the GraphQL uses only one endpoint. So if you have followed my CR API pen testing series, then you know that CR API was using REST APIs. And we saw that for every function, there was a different endpoint. For profile information, there was a different endpoint. For adding something to the cart, there is a different endpoint. For deleting something, there is a different endpoint. But that is not the case in GraphQL. In GraphQL, we only use one endpoint for updating, deleting, fetching, modifying, whatever is it. What changes is only the query. And further, we will see how query works and how you can type your own query. There is also one term that is used in GraphQL, which is called mutation. It's just a word for updating, modifying data in an application. It will all make sense when we will perform practical in DVGA. So here I am in my Linux machine and I have my DVGA running on localhost with port 5013. You can see here the difficulty level is beginner. This is a default GraphQL implementation without any restriction, security controls and other protection in DVGA. So leave it as it is and now we will explore the application like a normal user. Let's see what this private paste is. I guess this is my own private paste even though I didn't manually edit it but it was there by default. Okay, we are DVGA user as you can see over there. And in the public paste, we can see there are a number of paste which is uploaded by other users. There is a title, description, their username, IP address, and user agent. And now here we have the option to create a paste. We can provide a title. I'm going to type in hello, visibility, uh, leave it as public. And in message, I'm going to type API hackers and submit. If I go back to the public paste, we can see my paste is added. There is another feature to import paste. Here we can provide the URL. And the last feature is upload paste. So we can choose a file to upload. Okay. Now it's time to open our inspector tab or dev tools. Go to the network tab and refresh the page. Here we can see number of requests, but the one that stands out is GraphQL. Click on this and here we have found the GraphQL endpoint. So this confirms that this application is using GraphQL. In the payload section, we can see the requested payload and it's a query. So this is a query generated by GraphQL requesting resources from the server. And in the response, we have this JSON data. So if there is written data in the top, you know that this is the response. We have paste object and inside it, we have number of different fields like ID, title, content, IP address, and user agent, which we saw on the page. So this endpoint is basically fetching all of these data and displaying it in the application. Seems like the IDs are in incremented manner. Okay, go back to the headers and you can see the request method is post. This is interesting, isn't it? Because this is fetching data. Normally we see that the REST API uses get or even an application without any APIs uses get method to fetch any kind of data. But here we can see the method is post. Also, the endpoint looks so normal. I mean, it doesn't tell anything what it is doing, what it is fetching. It just says GraphQL because the difference is in the query. Let's check out the private paste. Here we can see again the same endpoint is being used slash GraphQL, nothing else. And in the response, we can see there are only two pastes because there are only two pastes that is private. In the request payload, we can see paste public false. So that's why these paste are private. It's using a very basic idea behind this, okay? Let's try to create a paste and see how the query looks like in the backend. 
The moment I clicked on submit, there is another endpoint we can see in the network tab GraphQL. In the payload section, we can see the query that is being used to create the paste. But the difference here is we can see another keyword that is mutation. Since this is a post request, normally REST APIs use post for creating something. In this case, we are seeing this word mutation means something is being created. And then there is create paste. This is the name of the object. And then there is some variables and with its value. So the variables we can see over here is title, test, content, test, public, false, burn, false. That is the data which was provided by us. And that's how the query looks like. I'm gonna break it down further more in this video, so keep watching. It will all make sense. In the response, we can see the new object has been created with the data we provided, ID, content, and title. Okay, so now we have a little idea how query is working behind the scenes. But now comes the interesting part. We haven't even interacted with the GraphQL console yet. So what I'm going to do is fuzz for GraphQL endpoints. Of course you can use fuff for that, but I'm not going to use that since it is not very reliable with the API endpoint stuff. So I'm going to use Kite Runner. It's best for that. So I have my Kite Runner here. I can initiate it with KR keyword and then I'll type brute because I want to brute force and then the target URL. And then as always, we have to provide a word list. So I'm going to use GraphQL TXT, which is in my Seclist discovery web content. If you want to see why FUF is not very reliable with the APIs, try it out yourself. Try to fuzz for uh, GraphQL endpoints with the same word list, but with FUF, but you won't find anything. But in case of QuietRunner, we can see two endpoints, GraphQL and GraphQL. Let's open this both up in the browser. Seems like GraphQL is the right one, but we are getting 400 bad requests and GraphQL access rejected. There is something which is not allowing us to interact with this GraphQL console. I did notice something when I was going through this application. Open up the inspector again. Go to the application. Go to cookies with value GraphQL disable. So that's what's stopping us. Obviously, we are going to do cookie tampering. We're just going to change it to enable. Refresh the page and now we can access it. And we can also see the documentation explorer. Being able to see that is kind of like you have found the REST API documentation. You know all the endpoints and what are the endpoints that is available and how you can interact with it, what arguments it is expecting. So first, we are going to start with queries. What you are seeing here is technically called schema. This defines the queries and mutations that is available to the client that you can execute. Also, what are the data type of those um, arguments and the fields that you can provide to each object. Paste over here is an object and public limit filter are the arguments that we can use with this object. Before we go into anything, let's first do an introspection query. You might have heard about it. Introspection query allows you to fetch information about the schema. So even though we can already see the schema over here, but we can also query that. So the syntax goes like this, curly braces, hyphen hyphen schema, again curly braces, and inside it types. And we want the type and the name of all the queries and the mutations that is available to us. So this is the response. Over here, we can see the name of the object and the different types that is available, or you can call it data type, but uh, I think in GraphQL it is called scalar type. So this is a list of types that is available to us. Now let's have a look at each object in the query section. So I'm going to open up this first one, paste. So it is using paste object, and in this object there are a different number of fields. ID, title, content, public, user agent, IP address, owner ID, burn owner. So these are the fields that we saw in the query request, right? So let me write a quick query and show you how does it work. It's going to start with the query keyword and then curly braces. And here I'm going to type the name of the object, which is space. And again, curly braces. 
and here I need to type the field name. So whatever field that I want to fetch particularly. So you might have read that GraphQL only fetches data that is required or being asked by the client. And it doesn't populate you with bunch of useless data that you don't need. In the right side, you can see the fields that is available to us. But I'm going to fetch only some data that I want to see. I think it added ID by itself. Anyways, so in the response, we can see we only got the data we asked for. We didn't got user agent or IP address or burn value. We only got what we asked for. So this time I'm going to ask for title and content and here we have it. Seems like this is the private base. Also, if we remove the query keyword, it will still work. But I want to use it because it makes more sense, right? This time around, I'm going to use some arguments with the same object we've been using. Because it seems like the query we used before only fetched the data which is private to me. So my private paste. But I want to see public paste. How we do that? Let's type the query to fetch public paste. So I'm going to type the name of the object and then I'm going to provide some arguments. To do that, we have to type in round brackets and then public and its value is, as it already said here, is boolean. So we can either type in true or false. I'm going to type here true. And then I want to fetch content, title, id. And let's say user agent here. Let's send this request or query. And we have all the paste that is public. So this is how arguments work change it to false is going to show me my own private paste. Let's try to query this users object. So this is expecting fields, ID, username and password. Okay, to username return to us, but we cannot see the password. I don't know why. Well, probably that is good. But the point is, this is how the query is structured and this is how you can fetch data from the GraphQL using console. What we did until now is only fetch data. But how can you create something? How can you create a paste in this case? So time to move on to the mutation part. So these are the mutations that is available to us. First one is create paste. Same as before, we are going to provide fields arguments but the difference is instead of query we are going to type in mutation here and in the curly braces name of the object create paste and then we are going to add some arguments because we need to send some data right so the arguments that this object is expecting is burn i'm going to give it value false and then content so content is expecting a string value so whenever you're going to send a string value always keep it in double quotes so I'm going to type in GraphQL and give it public value as true and then title. So once we are done with the arguments, I'm going to open up another curly braces. And over here, we can see create paste is expecting field paste object, which is a paste we saw earlier. So it's the same object we used earlier, which was expecting these values. So I'm going to type in the value that I want uh, this server to fetch for me after my, after my paste is created. So I'm telling the GraphQL to create paste for me with these values. And then the same query we used earlier to fetch data. The difference is it is inside the create paste object. So it is kind of like nested object. Everything seems fine and now we can send this request and the paste is created and we have been assigned ID 15. Let's check if it is publicly accessible or not. So I'm going to type the same old query to fetch data, paste and then ID content and title. That's what I want to see. Okay, I need to provide the argument too because this is by default fetching private data and here i can see my paste has been added up and also we can see that in the application 
So mutation is working perfectly fine. This time, let's try to do some modification. So for that, I'm going to use this edit paste object. And since modification also come in mutation, we have to type mutation word before that. We have to provide some argument to edit paste, which is content and it is a string. So when double quotes, let's say changed. And we have to provide the ID of the paste that we want to change. In my case, it's 15. And then comes the title. So edit paste is also expecting field paste. So I'm going to fetch data, ID content, and title. Again, we are modifying something and fetching data at the same time. Kind of like doing put and get method at the same time. Let's do a normal query to see if it is changed or not. And it worked perfectly. We have the same ID but the content is changed. This time let's do a delete request. For that we have to type delete paste and then the ID because that's the argument it's expecting. And there is an error seems like uh, it's not expecting paste as okay. We have to type result in the field and not paste. I assumed that we can write paste, but that's not the case. Every time you try to query something, always see what are the fields that is required by it. In the response, we can see it says result true. So that means the paste has been deleted. Go to the application and in the public paste, we can see that our first paste has been deleted. So this is how you can find a GraphQL endpoint, understand how queries and mutation works and create queries according to the schema and play with the application. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and don't forget to like and share.